Hey, what's up guys and gals? So, I'm uh, sitting here reverse engineering some malware for this uh, lab that I'm doing. And I needed to go into a system file and look at some function exports in a, a completely different file. It was actually... Um, I forget what file it was now, but it was a it was a different operating system file in the System32 folder, um, a DLL file, and so that kind of got me thinking. I was like, wait a second, if I, you know, you can you can go ahead and and open up actual uh, Windows operating system files in Ida Pro, which is the reverse engineering uh, disassembly software that I'm using and pretty much it's industry standard you know and uh, since I'm using a 32-bit version of Windows for this um, analysis lab that I've got here I can go ahead and use IDA Pro free version which is what this is so what I decided to do I was like maybe I should just try to open up ntdll.dll and if you're not that familiar with Windows um, API programming and, and, and just Windows C programming and assembly programming and stuff like that. Basically, so there's something called the Windows API, which is made up of a bunch of different files. And one of the biggest files, or the, the most frequently uh, used files, is called kernel32.dll. In fact, even if you're not a programmer, you may have heard of this file because uh, back in the day, Windows used to crash and you would have kernel32.dll errors. Um, and stuff like that. Well, if you go to the uh, Microsoft Developer Network and you look up any kernel32.dll file, uh, file, let me show you what I'm talking about here. So I'll do like virtual alloc. Uh, so virtual alloc is a kernel32.dll function. So, all, see, like you can see right down here, it says kernel32.dll. So all of these kernel32 functions are inside of the MSDN uh, Microsoft documentation for Windows programmers. However, interestingly, um, kernel32 itself is, is still kind of high level. Even though it's called kernel32, it's not actually in the kernel. It's, a, it's an API for, uh, you know, programmers who develop uh, programs in user space to interface with the kernel. And the kernel32 functions in turn actually interface with ntdll.dll functions. So the ntdll.dll functions are the real um, API that's, that's actually interfacing directly with the kernel rather than kernel32 because so what could happen is one kernel32 function could actually end up using six ntdll functions or um, something like that basically so um, and and in what's interesting is is that your programs can actually directly call these ntdll functions and these ntdll functions are not really documented they're sort of kind of documented um, especially the user space ones um, they're, they're sort of documented. If you, if you Google them, it's kind of spotty. There's no real official Microsoft documentation for most of them. And as you can see here, I Googled this one. It's called RTL destroy atom table. And I mean, look at this, even Google is like, it doesn't really know what to do. Give me one of these did you means. And there's no MSDN or official Microsoft anything on here. It's all reverse engineering people that have kind of tried to figure this out so it would be interesting to know what the uh let's see windows atom table if they even about atom tables okay so there is a documentation that talks about what an atom table is and an atom table is a system defined table that stores strings and corresponding identifiers an application places a string in an atom table and receives a 16-bit integer called an atom that can be used to access a string okay so it's basically like a dictionary or a lookup table a string that has been placed in an atom table is called an atom name 
Interesting. The system provides a number of atom table tables. Each atom table serves a different purpose. For example, dynamic data exchange applications use a global atom table, share item name. So these are basically lookup tables or dictionaries. Um, system uses atom tables, not directly accessible applications. Here we go. Yeah, see. So the so the operating system itself uses atom tables. Um, how the application uses these atoms when calling a variety of functions. Or, however, the let's see. For example, register clipboard formats are stored in integral or internal atom table used by the system. So basically, this is some sort of data structure that is used by the operating system itself internally, and sometimes may be seen by uh, user space programs and stuff like that. It sounds like um, this is pretty interesting. Uh, I'll probably leave this in the description. This link. So you guys could check this out. But anyway, um, this isn't about atom tables. So I'm going to go back. But the, the whole point is, is that it's pretty neat because you can actually go into this operating system file and you can actually see all of the functions that make up um, this NTDLL API, which is uh, a, a pretty low-level API, which is really cool. Um, it's still, you know, it's still uh, an interfacing it's, it's still an interface. The interface is with uh, user space programs in some cases, but it mainly interfaces with uh, kernel 32 uh, functions. So what you could do as a developer, if you wanted to use this stuff directly, is you could make a call to ntdll.dll. So you could load that into your, uh, into your program, and then you could just call by ordinal number. Um, you could just do... Uh, you could do, you could do call by name too, but a, a call by ordinal number is actually quicker because the system doesn't have to do a lookup for a name. So um, and you could just do, make these calls like this, and it would actually conceal the name inside of the uh, binary as well. So whoever is reverse engineering the program would have to do what I'm doing here and go figure out what function corresponds to what ordinal. So, because I Googled it, and there's no way to tell. I mean, I, I Googled ordinal number two of one of the other system files, and nothing really came up. So, you just pretty much have to open these things up in a in some software like Ida and, and get this figured out. So, um, anyway, I'm not going to go into too much more detail, but I just thought that was pretty fascinating. Um, in fact, you know what I'm going to do just real quick? is I'm going to just open, try to take a look at one of these functions and see what it looks like. I'm just curious, but I want to pick one that's something that I've seen before. Oh, okay, NT, or RTL create heap. So this probably creates the heap. Um, go figure, right? So this, yeah, this is a function that sets up a heap for a program like you know the stack in the heap well this will create so most likely you know this, I'm not reading documentation here but most likely this function sets up a heap for a program so yeah you can actually <laughs> you can literally reverse engineer windows with this thing uh, it's pretty crazy so anyways uh, I'm gonna make another video probably go into more detail on some of this other stuff but uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you found this interesting. I'm actually going to go in, and uh, open up um, the kernel itself right now, which is called NTOS kernel. So, dot exec. See what I get out of that. So, all right. Thanks for watching.